Hey guys, it's Chris. From homes that are surrounded by impassable terrain to ones that were clearly meant to just be left alone, join me as I show you 10 of the world's most isolated homes. Number 10. Bishop Rock If you wish to look for the smallest island in the world today that had a building on it, you would need look no further than Bishop Rock. This island is part of the Isles of Sicily, which is an archipelago that is 28 miles off the coast of Cornwall in Great Britain. The proof that this is the smallest island with a building comes from the Guinness Book of World Records. The building that is on it is a lighthouse, the second one to ever grace the island. In 1847, the first lighthouse was built and subsequently washed away by the waves, which led to the building of a second one in 1858. To get to the island, you originally had to take a helicopter, as traveling by boat was deemed too dangerous, and then you'd have to rappel to the island itself via descending the lighthouse. Eventually, a helipad was installed. The lighthouse was eventually turned from a man-operated system to an automated one until it was shut down in 2007. Number 9. Crystal Mill Sometimes the most isolated of homes are ones that are more victims of circumstance than anything else. For example, in Crystal, Colorado, just above the Crystal River, is an abandoned place known as Crystal Mill. And despite its name, it's not a place that milled for crystals, but rather it was a compressor station. What would happen is that when operational, the water of the river would turn a water wheel, and that would power an air compressor which would allow power tools to be used for a variety of reasons, including mining for silver when it was in the area. As for its creation, the place was made in 1893 by George C. Eaton and B.S. Phillips, promoters of the Sheep Mountain Tunnel and Mining Company. In 1917, though, the mine was closed and the crystal mill went unused. It's still around to this day and is owned privately, and you can't go there without permission, likely to ensure that no vandalism or destruction of the property is done. Number 8. Meteora Now it's not uncommon for certain holy buildings or monasteries to be built in high up places, but in Greece, there are a series of these places. Once numbering 24, the complex is known as Meteora. The monastery can be found in Kalabaka at the northwestern edge of the plain of Thessaly within Greece. Its name translates to lofty as well as elevated. Now what's important to note about Meteora is that it's not built on a plateau or a higher plain, but rather built on a sandstone pillar, allowing it to be noticed from miles around due to its location. The first people believed to inhabit the area and the monastery were hermit monks from the Neolithic era of history, more specifically the 9th century. And it wasn't until the 14th century that the monastery was built upon the rock itself. Originally, people would have to climb up ladders in order to reach the building, but now the stone pillar has steps carved into it. After many centuries of being around, the monastery has been dubbed a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Number 7. Just Room Enough Island in the United States, there's a small island within the confines of the St. Lawrence River. The island itself is called Just Room Enough Island, because this island has just enough space on it for a single house and a yard, and not much else. While small, it is big enough to allow certain amenities. This includes having a tree, and occasionally having room for putting out chairs and such. However, because this is a flowing river, it has high and low tides. When the tide is high, the yard is consumed by the water. And when the tide is low, the family can come out and relax on the yard and sit in chairs. As for who owns and made the house, that would be the Sizeland family. They came to find the island in the 1950s and felt it would be the perfect place for a getaway home. Number 6. Edinburgh of the Seven Seas, Tristan de Cunha Edinburgh of the Seven Seas, which is in Tristan de Cunha, is a small town that has a title of being one of the most isolated places in the world. And that's because the town is over 1,200 miles away from any other settlement in all directions you can go, thus making it one of the most isolated places on Earth. The town itself was named after the Duke of Edinburgh back in 1867 when he came to visit the place. But in modern times, it's just known as the settlement by the 300 or so people that live there. And the number of the town didn't grow that much above that number. Should you visit there and then wish to go to another country, the closest place you could go would be South Africa, 
While there is plenty of wildlife and diversity on the island, Edinburgh of the Seas is also home to a volcano right in the middle of the island. The volcano erupted back in 1961, and the people had to be evacuated. But the volcano didn't do much damage to their homes and lands, only destroying certain businesses like a crayfish factory. They could return in 1963 and rebuild what was lost. Number 5. Colemanscop. The term ghost town is a reference to a place that was once very booming and populated, and then over the course of a number of years gets deserted by its populace. This is what happened to Colemanscop in Nambia. This place was founded by Germans in the early 1900s, as it was discovered that in this place were diamonds and lots of them. Many rushed to the place, including many who felt they could make a fortune, and started the search for diamonds. But by the time World War II ended, the diamonds were pretty much gone, and people started to leave the town, which was sad for many, because during the rush, the townsfolk made many amenities to please the German populace who had come there, including making a hospital, ballroom, power station, school, skittle alley, theater, and sports hall, casino, ice factory, and the first x-ray station in the southern hemisphere. What happened after the abandonment of the town was a result of nature, in this case the Nambi Desert. For with no one to maintain the place, the desert sands just moved in, literally. Now the buildings in Colemanscop are either broken or filled several feet high with sand, and now Colemanscop stands as a tourist attraction. Number 4. Long Studio In Fogo Island, Canada, just off of Newfoundland, there's a very long home known as Long Studio. The people of the area are very independent and want to contribute to the world in their own way. To that end, they made the Long Studio to be both a symbol for the seasons of the world and to be a conduit for those who want to do art themselves. This includes having one wall of the studio be basically a massive window, one that allows the person using the studio to get an unparalleled look at the waters outside, as well as letting in the light of the sun and sky to bring positivity to the user themselves. Now, it may seem odd to dedicate a place like this on the edge of waters and other terrain, but for these people who use it and live by it, they see it as a testament to art itself, as well as showing their dedication to the craft themselves. Number 3. La Rinconada, Peru The country of Peru is home to the Andes Mountains, and within the Andes is a settlement known as La Rinconada. This town sits 17,000 feet above sea level. This, in turn, makes it the highest human settlement on Earth at present, and by extension, one of the most isolated places in the world. And it should be noted, though, that this town is not small. It's rather large. 50,000 people reside in La Rinconada. This is unexpected due to its elevation and the fact that the placement within the mountains causes many problems to the people living there. For example, there's no running water near it which many consider a basic necessity for living. This fact has also caused certain health problems for the area. Add to that, living at higher elevations requires time for your body to adjust to the conditions. So this begs the obvious question of intent. Why would people put themselves through such hardships just to live? The answer to this is that there's gold in the area. The Labella Dermente Glacier is located just above the town, and under that glacier is gold and many people have come just to try and get some of it, though the process of getting it is very hard and rigorous, not just via the mining process, but via those who own the mines that they work in. Number 2. Svalbard Global Seed Vault Now, not every home has to be just for humans. In Norway, on the island of Spitsbergen, you'll find a place known as the Svalbard Global Seed Vault. Conservationist Kerry Fowler, in association with the Consultative Group on International Agriculture Research, made this vault as a backup of sorts for all the seeds in the world. To clarify, in certain areas of the world, there are gene banks, or places that contain samples of plant and animal life, in order to use in case a global apocalypse happens, and they need them to replenish the earth. The Svalbard Global Seed Vault is a backup in case many of the main seed vaults are damaged and their samples ruined, thus why it was put on a remote island in Norway. Every year new seeds are added to the vault, and are either stored or frozen depending on the contents to ensure they last. Number 1. Casa do Penedo Casa do Penedo literally translates to House of Stone, and this accurate title suits the home found in the Fafa Mountain of Portugal. This particular house was carved out of four giant boulders, all four of which can still be seen today if you choose to go and visit this house for yourself. Despite appearances of being a home from the Stone Age, the house is fully functioning in the modern sense, save for the fact that it does not have any electricity in it due to its construction and its placement in the mountains. 
So if you want to see at night, you'll need to use candles. This house was built in 1974, surprisingly enough, and was constructed to be a vacation house for people to come and visit and get away from it all. Which is actually another reason why they didn't put electricity into the place. Because of its unique form and its history, the Casa do Penedo is a very popular tourist attraction in Portugal. Well, thanks for watching. What did you think about these isolated homes? Are there any you could maybe be tempted into living in? Or do you prefer your very non-isolated homes that you have right now? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on World List.